huh? <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> that they did it. It's crazy. But the guys all gave it to me and it turned out I was the last girl in the class. The other girls had dropped out. They couldn't do it. And I stuck it out and everything. And that's the that name stuck with it. Well, good for you too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, good for you being the only gal is what I'm saying. That's, you know, let's let's keep that going, ladies and gentlemen. You understand that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Susan, uh, more people might end up joining because, like, you know, people are in different parts of the world, you know, when, when we host these Zoom chats. And what mostly happens, we talk Darkwing, we talk DuckTales, we talk any kind of cartoon from 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, Andrew, the second youngest in our group, he's in the middle of my screen. I don't know where he is on yours. Yes. Hi, Andrew. Hello. And nice he, to meet you. He's a huge 60s Batman fan, so. Well. You know, <laughs> you know that I am mousy. You are actually talking to mousy. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that so. was a great show that we really had such a wonderful time, Andrew. I've done a lot of bat ventions, uh, you know, going uh, all over the United States, uh, meeting people and going, uh, you know, with the cars and, the, you know, the whole bunch of stuff and, and uh, meeting all the fans that we never knew. I got to tell you, we knew we were doing a great show. We loved the show, but we had no idea that people like you, Andrew, would just still be in love with us. So thank you. Thank you for that. We're very happy about that. So what did you love most about it? What did you love about uh, Batman? What was like your favorite thing about that show? Well, for me, I, did, I only was able to watch it when it would do the reruns on TV land. Right. And I watched those with my mom. And it, it just stood out compared to a lot of the other shows I was watching at the time. Just the bright colors. And it right. just, it was just, the whole family could watch it, really. So. Right. It was a good, yeah, it was a great show for everybody. And it was live action. You know, it wasn't a cartoon, but it had the feeling of being fantasy and not real, but real. And, uh, you know, we, we, the bubblegum, you know, colors were amazing. So it was very innovative when we did that in the 60s. Yes, so that you, Andrew, you know, at this time in your life can go, yeah, that's still pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so Susan, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna have everybody introduce themselves to you from my order in my screen, okay? Okay. All right, uh, Jordan. Uh, hello, I'm Jordan. I'm from uh, Canada. Oh, I love Canada. Which <laughs> Canada? Uh, from Ontario. From Ontario, okay, that's yeah. kind of my Canada because I, I was born in New York and I worked in Toronto and Montreal. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there's the VC Canada, you know, the other. Yeah, Canada. yeah, the other yeah. side. Yeah, the other side. But, um, oh, well, nice to meet you, Jordan. Jordan, who's your, Jordan who's your favorite Susan Silo character? Uh, probably say uh, Wu Ya from uh, Zhao Lin Showdown. Oh. Oh, okay. Love her. Yes, she <laughs> was very strange. I loved, I loved it. Did you remember when she did the transformation into the beautiful woman? And yeah. Then yeah, it would be Wu Ya. It was a great show. We had Tom Kenny on that show, who was SpongeBob. Yeah, that show had a really good cast. Yeah, it was a fantastic class. We cast. We had uh, Tara Strong and and uh, Tom and uh, oh, the guy from Seinfeld. Now I'm, I'm losing it, but he was great. I mean, wonderful cast. Really good director. Great show. Great show. Love that show. All right, next, Michelle. Uh Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm from New York. Oh, yay! Like me. Where in New York? Uh, Westchester County. Westchester County. Well, I'm a Manhattanite, you know. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm, I'm north of you, there. yeah. <laughs> oh, I know where you are, you know. It's just that I go visit. That was the country to me. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. a city girl. Michelle, who's your favorite Susan mm -hmm. Silent character? I mean, I went looking through that, that long list that you have running. Um, to, honestly, I haven't seen most of them, but, you know, you were awesome as Neptunia. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> but I'm not a girl, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love Neptunia. Well, and we spoke to Andrew. Yes, hi again, Andrew. Nice <laughs> to talk to you. We spoke to Gadget, but uh, Gadget, we didn't... Uh, ask you anything so why don't you go well it's your show so ask uh, what you think uh, okay andrew uh is uh mousy your favorite character oh 
Well, for the longest time, I didn't know um, that she played her until mm-hmm. much later. And so at the time, my favorite character was Neptunia. But now I really <laughs> love. Um, now, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, you're, <laughs> and Andrew's in uh, Mississippi, uh, Susan. Oh, Mississippi. It's pretty. Very mm-hmm. pretty. Uh, how's your weather there now? Getting colder. Getting colder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I like that. I like the changes, Susan. All right, gadget. Well, I'm from Bronx, New York, and Yay, my <laughs> mm-hmm. and I grew up watching you because we used to watch the let um see Han Do- Dobie Gillis oh, everyone, oh, oh, oh. and yeah, I re- I used to watch all of those, and then it would be always then the '80s came and it was Miss Pac Man and all the Sue and everything and. Just all that. And then you made my niece's day when Jakers came out because that. Oh, yeah. did you love Jakers Piggly Piggly? With, yeah. Oh, I that, love my it. Dad, my dad felt like he, it was my grandfather back again when he would tell the stories and everything. So he said that was a blessing for my niece that you guys made that show oh, and everything. Thank you, because that was. Uh, and Rusie Taylor was on that yeah. show. I, yeah, rested. I she was that, a Mel, very Brooks, dear Mel friend. Brooks was on that too sometimes, right? Yeah, sometimes yeah. as a guest. We had, yeah. we, had, we had great guests. We had Charlie Adler. Mm-hmm. We had, you know, a bunch of, you know, of crazy people. And um, yes, I was Nanny the Goat. I was the Irish Nanny the Goat. Yeah, I was like, I, mm-hmm. I, I heard a little bit Neptune, but then I was like, no, there's the accent, the no, Irish. I was like, no, no, no. like, no, it disappeared. Like, it was. I couldn't figure it out until I saw that. I was like, oh, wow, it's her. And I'm like, damn. And everything. Well, my job, darling. Did yeah. you it was good. <laughs> it was really good. Like, thank you, you so much. And everything. And thank you for that show because, like my dad said, it was a blessing. Oh, I, I really appreciate it. I know the people who produced it would thank you, too. Mm-hmm. All right. And next we got Vix. Another great name. Hi, Vix. Hi, I'm Vix. I'm from New Jersey. Oh, okay, it's all right. It's across the river. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the George Vic, Washington you... Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Vic, so, do yes, you have a yeah. Vic, do you have a favorite Susan Silo character? I gotta go with gold classic Neptunia. All right. Oh. <laughs> go Neptunia, man. Maybe I should put that on my tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, Next we know. got Stan. Hey, Stan. Hello, I'm Stan. Hello. I'm from uh, Burlington, Vermont. Oh, Vermont. Mm. Yeah, is, Stan, do you have a favorite uh, Susan Silo character? I do. It's Neptunia, though. A close second is Topsy's mom from Toxic Crusaders. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Biker Mice from Mars and everything. Oh, that's a, yeah, well, that's another one of my favorites, too. But, but oh, I love Toxie's mom. I remember she was great. Uh, but, oh, my God, that was a wonderful show. We had we were really lunatics on that show. Well, <laughs> yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. But I, I do got to find out, though, because apparently you did voices in the real Ghostbusters and the Back to the Future cartoons. So I got to figure out who you played in those. I, you know, John, like, if, when you figure it out, Sam, would you give me a buzz? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, IMDb terrible. was less than helpful. Terrible, terrible. Nice mm-hmm. to meet you, Sam. Mm-hmm. All right, next we got uh, Victoria, but we call her Tori. Hello. Hi. Hello, Tori. I'm t- from Tennessee. Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty state. I love our country. You know, I love our mm-hmm. states, and I love traveling mm-hmm. to them to, to meet all the people and the fans. It's really mm-hmm. great. What do you got for me? What's your question? Well, I love Neptunia. I made this Aww. rock. Oh, that's so pretty. What a, a close second is also you're currently voicing on one of my brother's favorite shows. He's been watching it since he was little and still watches it even nearing 16 years old on Curious George. Oh, Neddy Paschetti. Neddy a wife. Yeah. Oh, Sheffy, I love you. Yeah, that's Jim mm-hmm. Cummings. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just worked it last week and I'm working it. I, I'm on hold for, uh, you know, more. We have, uh, hopefully, let, you, let your darling brother know we have a year and a half more to go. So there's going to be lots to watch. Lots <laughs> to watch. <laughs> All right. And then, Susan, we got somebody on the other side of the world. It's probably 2 a.m. where he's at. We got Tim. Where are you from, Tim? Hi, I'm in London. 
You're in London. Oh God, I love that town. <laughs> I really do. I love, well, I have uh, uh, friends there, lots of friends there, and we do speak to each other, but we usually speak to each other where it's not so time crazy. Uh, you know, I'll speak from a morning and they're like in the evening, you know, but I did a lot of work with uh, Julian Holloway, you know, Stanley Holloway's uh, son. He's a very close dear friend. And we've done a lot of cartoon stuff together. We did, uh, um, what was it, uh, the um, uh, James Bond, James Bond Jr. Oh, James Bond, right, yeah. I love mm, that one. I did that with Julian. We've done other shows, but I, I, I can't remember because we bounced around a, a, a lot. But Jules and I did a, a lot of work. And, and uh, I talked to my English friends and I, well, bless <laughs> you. Thank you for loving me. <laughs> Hey, Tim, do you have a favorite Susan Silo character? Um, well, I, I'm going to go, I'm going to to, to uh, default to Neptunia, of course, but um, mm -hmm. I also really like your, your music, too. I really like Dear Diary. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my God, bless your heart. I have, a, I have a little story about that, Tim. Um, when I was doing a show on camera, live action show, I worked with Frank Sinatra Jr. And... Um, I had no idea, you know, I, I was the actress and I wasn't, Dear Diary was as a teenager, you know, I did that as a teenager. Now I was still a teenager, but an older teenager <laughs> playing a teenager with Frankie Sinatra Jr. And so he comes over to me on the first day on the set and says, oh, Susan Silo, I'm so thrilled to meet you. And I'm thinking, oh, because I'm such a great actress. And he goes, I love Dear Diary. And I went, <laughs> oh my God. Going back to my teenage rock and roll years, that's what he loved about me, you know. But thank God for Dear Diary and bless you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Susan, like I said, uh, normally we just hang out and talk cartoons and stuff, but because you're here, you know it's going to turn into an interview. Um, but before we, everybody start asking you questions, like just can you tell us like, what are you doing, you know, these days? What, are you working on anything that you're not signed an NDA on? And what movies are you watching? Are you going out with COVID, you know? Well, um, COVID has impacted us uh, qu quite, quite a bit. Um, we're just beginning to maybe get back into the studio. Uh, I have been recording from home. I did, uh, talk about non-disclosure, I did a confidential uh, uh, role on a movie that will be out the the quote unquote name is supernova baby but it's not uh it's going to be changed um but i've been working on that for about a year and a half uh but then you know there was a stopgap because of this you know covid thing and um curious george luckily we've been able to do from my home but there are other studios that it's a little bit more difficult and they are making noises that some of us will be able to go back to certain studios. So that's, it's still kind of uh, up in the air and I have uh, a few projects in the works, but it depends where I'm going to be and how we're going to do it. We've had a lot of glitches with, um, uh, even though we've been successfully recording, but it takes a lot more time and, um, People, if people's internet goes out, like for Curious George last uh, last week, uh, the director's internet went down and she had to direct me through the telephone. <laughs> so, uh -huh. you know, it ha and there's been 90 minute delays. Another uh, dear director, I don't know if you guys uh, watch who the directors are of shows, but Ginny McSwain, who is a fantastic director. You guys know, some of you guys know who that yeah. is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ginny Definitely. Is a, Jenny is a dear, dear, dear friend. We've done many, many shows together. She had a 90 minute delay on a show. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a big delay and stuff. And you know, time is money. And it's uh, so, you know, I'm loving, I'm watching more television than I've ever watched in my life. Even though I love the work that we do, I just don't usually have the time, but uh, here I am at home. <laughs> And loving Netflix, Netflix. and uh, you know, <laughs> loving what you know the availability, and loving seeing all my friends on on shows, and you know, calling them up, zooming them, 
and saying loved you in your last thing and whatever. So that's kind of what I've been, um, you know, really involved in. And then just uh, keeping up with podcasts, you know, people Mm -hmm. are very kind and they want to talk to me. (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is going to sound very flirtatious, Susan, but I don't care. Uh You're you're aging very, very well. You look great. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have a lot of time to work out. (laughs) <laughs> i've been doing a lot of people have said to me i'm getting so much weight you know what am i going to do i said what are you talking about i said you have all the time to work out and do your thing i do a three mile walk every morning and on the weekends i do double and i've always been a dancer and everything so i do a lot of my floor exercises and and whatever and then you know just kind of keep myself healthy and it's a perfect opportunity to do so Mm-hmm. So I'm taking advantage of that. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. What are you watching on Netflix? Well, I just watched that new Sophia Loren uh, movie, which uh, uh, her son did, Eduardo. Uh, bring out your handkerchiefs, folks. Uh, <laughs> you know, because, and the young boy is, I can't pronounce his name, I'm sorry, but he's a, a new young actor. And he is, um, I don't know if he is Senghalese, but he, is playing singles and uh it's a heartbreaking neapolitan italian story uh that just covers everything you know she's a a, a, a jewish uh, a sort of holocaust survivor and she was a hooker i mean it's just it goes into just everything and god bless her the woman can act <laughs> she's 86 years old and i thought gosh she memorized those lines bless her heart you know <laughs> but it's very it's a very well done piece i also like uh, the queen's gambit oh i haven't it's, seen that one yet oh it's very cool about chess it's about oddly enough that somebody said it to me and i went i'm going to watch chess <laughs> God, that's going to be very long and boring, even though a lot of people find it fascinating. But I don't want to sit for hours watching chess. But duh, you know. And then Nurse Ratchet. Wow. <laughs> Weird. Wonderful. <laughs> Nothing like the Cuckoo's Nest, which I think they'll probably get to. But there's so many great so- shows. Succession. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could I could go on and on and on. And then there's some wonderful shows. Uh, oh, by the way, I love The Crown, Tim. What do you think, Tim? Now, here's a conversation. Tim, you're you're in England. Uh, what do you think of the crown? Are are you fond of it? Do you find it interesting? You, what? I haven't seen too much of it to comment. I saw a discussion with one of the directors about it um, at a uh, an industry event. Um, and uh, I have a lot of respect for it. And um, it's uh, yeah like it's uh, i know a lot of people work on it as well so um yeah it's uh it, it it's big it's big over here oh i'll bet it is i'll bet it is but i think the acting is superb i mean uh i think the the actors without doing the crown are superb you know what i mean they, they've gotten themselves a fabulous cast of the older people that i just adore Helen Helena Bonham Carter. I mean, come on, uh, you know, and and the Queen. I mean, they're just they're marvelous. Uh, so we love it. We Americans uh, are really eating it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all right, I'm gonna go around to everybody now. So you, you can ask your question for. Her. All right. Let's start off with you, Jordan. Okay. Uh, what led what led your decision to start to get into voice acting when you started off in live action? <laughs> That's a very good question. Actually, it was brought to me, Jordan. Uh, I not only did live action of, um, you know, dramatic shows and comedy and all yeah. that, but I got into commercials and someone said to me, uh, that was on camera, you know, live action on camera. Someone said to me, you know, when you do a commercial, sometimes they do a shot of like your hand, an insert of your hands or whatever, and you're doing your own voiceover, right? So someone said to me, you know, you really have such a great voice. Have you ever thought of voiceover? At that time, in the 60s, I was like, huh, what? You know, it was not a big deal. It was very closed, very closed, extremely closed in animation. And all I knew was live action commercials. And so I went to my agent, I said, should I be doing that? And they went, well, yeah, you want to try, you know, you want, 
Well, it just took off, man. Uh, it was <laughs> just wild. And I did say this because I do, I, I do teach well before COVID uh, and coach is that I did have to learn the difference of commercial work and uh, animated work as, as opposed to live action. Yeah, there is, a, there is definitely um, a way of doing the, a formula that is different. And so Joni Gerber, well, this is from years ago, who was a big voiceover gal in commercials, uh, gave a class for actors up where I lived in Nichols Canyon. And we all sit around the cocktail table and she'd show us what, you know, what to do. And by golly, I learned, I trained and I learned. You do, I do believe you have to really train for both, for both. So that's how it started and yay. <laughs> all right, Michelle. Um, how has acquiring work changed over time for you? You know, do people go and find you or does your agent have to say, oh, let's try this, let's, let's audition for that one? It's kind of a combination, Michelle. You know, it's like I can get some jobs just because they go, let's get Silo, you know, and it's over, which I love. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but Silo still has to audition like everyone else. Uh, it, it depends on what level audition. You may be a request and still not get it, you know. But, you know, it's selection rather than rejection. I have lived my life in the business since I'm four. Obviously, I didn't get every part I was up for. Mm -hmm. Mostly, most of the parts you're up for, you don't get. I always used to say, you know, I can figure out why I didn't get the part, but why the heck did I get it? You know, what was that thing that happened, that magic that happened? So it's a, it's a, it's still, a, I'm a still working stiff, honey. I'm still working it. It's okay. I love doing the auditions. As Gordon Hunt once said, just pretend like you already got the job. All right, uh, Andrew. Um. What led you to end up on an episode of the Batman series? And what was Frank Gorshin and Adam West like on the scene of filming? Well, Frankie and I became really great friends. Um, yes, we did another show called Empire where I played his uh, southern wife, his little backwoods wife. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, Frankie, Frank, I'll tell, okay, I'll tell you a little thing about Frankie. Frankie was so insecure that after every take, he'd go, was I good? Do you think that was good? Was it? <laughs> and there he was, a man of so many talents. As you know, he was an impersonator too. You know, he was, he was just a very talented man, but he always wanted to know, was it good? And, you know, there you go. There's someone who's so, you know, big in, in, in name and yet still has insecurities. That's the human part of it. Being an actor, oh, it's tough. It's tough. And Adam was a doll. Adam, Adam loved me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he was a, a just a fun guy. Hated wearing the tights. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> Not like the tights. But uh, but it. Oh, and what led me to it? Um, uh, agent audition, and they went bingo. That's our girl. All right, Gadget. Mine is more technical because I know the transition from analog to digital recording and everything. How has that changed with sound and quality with voice acting? Because you usually got like the pings and the you could hear the background when you were hearing the Flintstones, when you were hearing all the 80s ones, Pac-Man, everything, to now where it's so simulcast and everything. Because my friends at Funimation are doing the co with COVID being at home and everything, they're doing the voice acting like that. And they said the same thing too. You can hear the difference depending on in-studio technology versus home studio technology. Has it changed for you? Like, do you like the new version where it's more digital and more seamless? Or do you like the fact that it used to have some background to it and everything, you could hear more into it? Yeah, it's a very good question, actually. That, uh, and that's, uh, uh, you know, for what's happening right now, it's uh, very apt. For you to ask that. Um, I remember when they used to use a razor 
and slice the reel and tape and everything. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> my God, that's how far back I go. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to DJ but, and we had that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, there you go. And, uh, and everything. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think you know when we work. Well, let's take animation. When when we work animation, we work very hard at our characters, right? And we're doing all physical things, so to speak, while we're voicing, because we want you to believe the character, you know, on the screen. And so it's very physical, what we're doing. Um, We would do a lot of stuff and then we'd hear it and it sounded muddy to me. Okay. In other words, I did all that work and that's what that, and that's what that sounds like. Mm -hmm. Do you, you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, I know what money, yeah. You know? And I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, I really worked hard to get that. And they had take after take after take. Yeah. You know, you got to do it this way, you got to do it that And then when I heard it, I went, <laughs> yep. What? What's the difference? I mean, who cares? So I think I kind of like it. Also, they can do things that you don't have to take so many takes because they take out weird breaths. Right. Or they, you know what I'm saying? And that's seamless. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of do like it. The theme is better than the old fashioned with the analog. And yeah, because the- I felt it was muddy. That that's the word that comes to yeah. mind. It was murky, muddy. It did, I like to it, I like to hear myself really clearly. You know what I'm saying. I would love to see how Neptunia sounds now versus back in the '90s with all the oh, technology. Yeah. yeah, wouldn't that be? Well, let's let's yeah. hey, right in. We want to get that. Back. <laughs> <laughs> like if, if they actually do do the reboot if they do anything else and they have neptunia come on the show and everything i would love to hear how you sound in the in the 2000 version of me too <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would be doing my homework i'll tell you that but will <laughs> sent me some stuff so i felt very good about that i went oh because don't forget out of all the characters even though i love neptunia mm-hmm. there's a lot of characters i've done oh you did I I to, you know, I I so i'm like i'm in i'm in awe of all your characters because that's what got me into acting and everything because i would watch everybody and I used to work on Law and Order and all that stuff, but it was the background. They would tell me the same thing too. Why don't you go into voice? Because that'll help project you more. And oh, I, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's why I yeah. want to know about the technical yes. would be better now than it would have been when I started too. Yes. So. Yes. Yes. Good question. Mm-hmm. All right, Stan. Well, my, my question revolves around this gem, once again, Toxic Crusaders. <laughs> In so my... disgusting. The show is so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, my question is, Toxie's mom is a strong, independent, take no sass woman, and I was just curious: did the character, how she was portrayed, did that all come from the creator of the show, or did you draw inspiration from like your own mom for her? <laughs> I love that. Mom, are you listening? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, um, you know, she was a very strong woman, but her love for Toxie, I thought was so incredible. He could do no wrong. And I think that that strength had a lot of warmth to it. In other words, she wasn't a mean, strong one. You know what I'm saying? I wanted the relationship uh, between Toxie. And as when we do certain shows, as we go, we grow. You know, you start to relate to each other. And the, and the people who are writing it go, oh, you know, she said, oh, keep that in what you just said. or ju-, And they start writing for us and the characters develop. And so it is, uh, you know, definitely ensemble work where they start out with something that's pretty raw, Stan. You know, we give them our best. But then as we work the show, relationships develop. And if you're, if you're in working with good actors and good writers who are listening, they go, oh, you know, it'd be great next week if, you know, Toxie's mom did that or that because it came from something real, a real development. Good question. I hope I've answered it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Tori. Um, I was going to ask, I was going to ask if you prefer like 
recording with more than one person in the booth and like connecting with the others otherwise by yourself I don't think I know which one you're gonna say but like does it take does it take longer with a lot of people in the booth because you're all like goofing off Yeah, because we're goofing off, exactly. And because if we do something funny, everybody laughs and ruins the take. (laughs) Or applause, or does something really stupid. I mean, when when I was working with Dom DeLuise on um, American Tale, Five Old American Tales, you know, we couldn't get, we couldn't get a take. Because the man was so inherently funny that Don Castellaneta, Dan Castellaneta and the whole gang and everybody, we were just like, well, what are we doing here? We might as well not record. I mean, because this is just stupid. We're having a part. <laughs> but I tell you, seriously, but I tell you that, that that makes it work, that craziness. Then when we stop the laughter and we go into the script, into the takes, wow, do you get, that's what you love when you hear us and you know see the characters on the screen because we're bringing that you know, to you. And yes, uh, you're right. I do love working with everybody. However, (laughs) selfishly, selfishly, sometimes you can get certain things going because you know your character so well, you don't need anybody. (laughs) (laughs) You just do it yourself and go, thank you very much. Where's my next gig? (laughs) <laughs> All right, Tim. I hope I answered that. <laughs> Tim. Okay, um, so Susan, um, in, in your opinion, having had a career in all three, how are the craft of voice acting, film acting, and recorded song performance similar or different to one another? Well, having a stage, that, um, there's definitely um, different techniques, obviously, uh, Tim. In other words, let's take stage first from where I really, really started before, you know, television and everything uh, on stage. Uh, and then I went into recording. But um, there's uh, an immediate reaction from the audience and artists love that um you know the laughter the tears the applause it's like wow uh, wow is a big wow and i started at four and i really loved it <laughs> and uh, i work with my parents and uh, obviously they loved it too um but then and it's bigger it's it's bigger you can be you can be much bigger but then when you, um, as, as on stage singing, you can be much bigger. You know, I was in the orig- original West Side Story and they did not mic us. The mics were in the foots. You had to sing your brains out, you know, <laughs> really. So there you go. But then you get into the recording studio and you can pull back a bit. You don't have to project the way you have to do like on stage. Now that's the same thing with acting on stage and acting on film. It's smaller, it's closer. So you have to be very careful of not being too big. You have to put, it's a more internal work, more internal work. Um, And then definitely with animation, animation, the character comes first and then the voice comes because I dress myself, I make up and dress myself internally and then I can speak. And that's the kind of work that the good actors do because it's voice acting, it's not voice over. You know, voice over is more narrative. You know, it's like you're watching a lake and I'm describing a lake. But when you're a character, you are that character. In other words, if I was playing teenagers, I'd come to the studio in jeans and sneakers. If I was playing a villainess, I'd wear high heels and something really tight 
and something that would hmm, make me feel like Ms. Fortune. You know? mm -hmm. And so, you know, but Phoebe, you know, was, wow, okay, fine. <laughs> Bouncy. But it's very physical. It's very physical what we do. So I hope I've answered you. There's, you know, different, different placements for all this, different techniques. And yes, they are different. And commercial, same thing. That's a whole different mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Tim, you got her all serious, man. She was joking and everything. You got her so serious <laughs> with that question. Well, I don't know if the English always do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Vix. What was it like working with the Darkwing Duck team to voice Neptunia? Oh, what, what a great cast. I mean, you know all the characters of the cast. Once again, a lot of laughter, you know, in, in the studio. Um, we all absolutely adored each other and uh, Jeannie McSwain, you know, and she'd let us go. And a lot of the times, a lot of the ad libs would be kept in the show because we'd get so crazy and go off script and they'd go, that's fabulous. That's Neptunia. That's all the rest of the characters, you know, Darkwing and, and everybody and Jim Cummings. I mean, these are amazing pros, amazing pros. And we, we had a party. Still having a party. <laughs> Still having a party. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm last, uh, Susan. Um, my question is, um, since COVID and there's no conventions going on, is there a way we can get your autograph virtually or somehow? Like, I, I got to get me a Susan Silo autograph somehow. <laughs> oh, my darling. Well, I don't know. Let's think on that. I never even thought of that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know what I, I usually do, and I, I don't want to be crass about this, but on my website, there's a store where you buy the, you know, the things and I send you the things. That's, that's what we all do. I mean, I'm not the only one who does that. Uh, that's usually uh, how we do it. And it's done by snail mail. You know, you just uh, pay the thing and then I send the thing or the office sends the thing, you know, and that's, that's about the only way that I can think of. Um, that's the old fashioned way, but that's well, I know idea. Jim Cummings, uh, Raw Paulson, several of them, they've been doing like virtual stuff. Like they're going to Instagram live and uh, Facebook out. live and stuff like that. We're using Shout out also to do in photographs and things mm -hmm. like that too. Oh, well, you know, guys, uh, I'd have to think of, I'd have to get hooked up in, into that, but I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I, I have not been involved uh, in that. I've had, I've had my hands full with uh, a lot of other things personally and, and during this COVID, as, as you all, all of you have your story. And so I hope you understand that I'm not just the actress uh, I'm the human being too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that has to take care of, uh, you know, familial things and, mm -hmm. uh, and life. We'll, we'll talk some more about that stuff, Susan, off the, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, yeah, we'll talk some more. Anybody on got our date. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll definitely take oh, you yeah. on a date now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anybody else got any questions for Susan? I got one. You got one, Stan? Is there any movie or animated project that you wanted to be on that you just never got the chance? Thought of that. Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Robert Wise. May he, may he rest in peace. Robert Wise putting his down. Boy, the questions are great, guys. Um, okay. I told you I was in the original West Side Story. Okay, and Tim knows I'm a singer, okay. Uh, and maybe the rest of you know from my uh, record, Dear Diary, and then there's this flip side and there's uh, two other records uh, that I did. Uh, that was big hit. Uh, but being in West Side Story, uh, I was a teenager, uh, but uh, I played Rosalia uh, uh, on Broadway. Uh, the role uh, Rosalia was uh, the one who was in the I, uh, I Feel Pretty and also in um, uh, America. Uh, I did, you know, Puerto Rico, you lovely island. That was me, a blonde Puerto Rican. But um, I got to Hollywood and, oh, I understudied for Maria because I was not blonde. I had long, dark hair and I could sing Maria, okay? I got to Hollywood as a teenager and I did a screen test for Maria for West Side Story. Oh, oh man. Uh -huh. 
and Robert Wise directed it. Got it, giving me chills right now talking about it. He's my mom's favorite. That's what he said. Yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah. Okay, so yeah. so listen to this. So and I could sing it, and I did, and I did it with the real cat. You know, I, it was just a beautiful, beautiful screen test, and it was up in the air because, as you know, there were no stars in the movie. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. money, you know, they could, they needed someone, and they had Natalie Wood on, you know, online okay. with it, and and me. Oh and we know who God. did yeah. it. Mm. And I understand why she did it, but I always felt. Uh, but imagine what you would have been mm. like. So I, I saw Robert Wise, Mr. Wise, at a party. And we got to talking and he says, Susan, you're so beautiful and you could sing and you do blah, blah, blah. And I said, Oh, Mr. Wise, I just wish I could have done, you know, Maria. And he said, yeah, but look what happened to Natalie. So, mm. you know, it was kind of a boo, you know, mm. thing. But he was a, a sweetheart. So, yes, there, that in answer to your question, yes, that, that was it. Wow. Anyone else? I don't want to hold Susan too long. She's been with us 45 minutes. Oh, you got some, Tim? Okay, just one, yeah. I was just going to ask Susan, have you ever voiced a character for an animation and not known what they look like in advance? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I had to make up in my head what I thought the character would look like because they didn't finish the production they didn't finish the doing and you know what they do they send you a script sometime and say uh up for grabs we don't know what it's really going to look like but here we're giving you this yeah they they sometimes change the whole thing oh and you know what they do too sometimes they film us and they change it because of the way we move well like old disney animation the way mm -hmm. they do it Okay. I'm always, I'm always, you know, moving. Good question, Nobody. You guys are wonderful. I'm going to have to uh, take my leave. I have another meeting coming up, but, but you guys are absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. For Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. Bye. That was great. That was fun. Yeah. Are we oh. both? We're still live though, right? Yeah. yeah.